Now, this video is about a very special preference function, namely mean variance preferences. So the Markowitz approach to portfolio theory finds the optimal asset selection for an investor with mean variance preferences. And mean variance preferences are a very special class of preferences. In 1979, Markowitz and Levy show in a research paper that a second-order Taylor approximation of any expected utility function leads to a mean variance preference expected utility framework. So Markowitz and Levy show the following. Here you can be any concave utility function. 1 plus RW characterizes the future wealth distribution with RW being the return on wealth. Notice, as the utility function is concave, U double prime is negative. Markowitz and Levy basically showed that an investment strategy that maximizes an investor's expected utility is approximately the same strategy that maximizes the return that the investor receives on average for a given level of variance. Now the right hand side of that last expression represents what is called mean variance preferences. These are the preferences for which Markowitz in 1952 solves the optimal portfolio selection problem. A mean variance investor wants to find a portfolio that generates a wealth distribution, 1 plus RW, that maximizes the expected mean variance preference function. As U is a positive monotone transform of the input and U double prime is a measure for the investor's risk aversion, the expected mean variance utility function can be simplified to the following expression. Where gamma i is the relative risk aversion of investor i, the expectation of Rw is the expected return on the invested wealth and the variance of RW is the respective return variance. Note, a mean variance preference investor likes high average returns but dislikes variance. So bad times are states where expected returns are low while the variance is large. I find it important to highlight that other types of benefits or risks that are associated with a particular investment are ignored by mean variance preferences. So benefits that arise from a positively skewed wealth distribution or from the ability to hedge income or housing risk of the investor or from being in line with the investor's ethical, moral or environmental standards are not considered. Likewise, additional risks such as negatively skewed future wealth or fat tails in the wealth distribution or the inability to hedge personal risks or the violation of personal moral standards are not considered in these mean variance preferences. So the portfolio to an investor who likes to consider all of these dimensions might look very different than the mean variance optimal portfolio. Now let me now visualize mean variance preferences via so-called indifference curves. An indifference curve visualizes 
expected return variance combinations of the investment induced future wealth distribution that an investor is indifferent about. Now let's pick one employee of our Daimler case and let's call him Amir. Now Amir has a risk aversion of zero. So he's basically risk neutral and prefers investment induced wealth distributions that have the highest mean independent of the variance or any other higher moment risk measure. So let's visualize that here. On the x-axis, we have the amount of volatility of an investment strategy. And on the y-axis, we have its expected return, as well as the resulting indifference curve. You see that Amir's indifference curve is a horizontal line and his expected utility of an investment coincides with the investment's expected return. Investment strategies that line up on an indifference curve are preference-wise indistinguishable for Amir. Well, Risk-neutral preferences are a rare phenomenon among individuals. Research identifies that individuals have a risk aversion of somewhere between 1 and 20. So let's pick another person, say Pauline. Pauline has a modest risk aversion of 2. Her indifference curves are upward sloping whereas Amir's indifference curves were horizontal. This says that Pauline is only willing to accept higher volatility of her wealth distribution if the level of expected future wealth increases sufficiently strongly. Also notice how an investment with an expected return volatility combination of A creates an expected utility of 0.02 to Amir, but only an expected utility of 0.01 to Pauline. Pauline's expected utility is not increasing because she dislikes that investment A results in a larger variance. Got feedback? We would love to hear it. Please drop us a line. And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.